there are some basic hour charts that everyone should know. And in today's video, I'll show you what these are and I'll also show you how to create them with ggplot. So basically, this video shall serve as a great starter kit for ggplot. Let's dive in. I am very sure that you have seen many line charts in your life before as they are used everywhere. So it makes sense to use them as a starting point for this video. So let's check out how to create basic line charts with ggplot. In my quarter file, I've already put in the tidyverse package and the data set that we want to use in this video here, or rather for this specific line chart. Here, this data set contains opening prices and closing prices and high and low values for specific stocks of specific symbols. For example, AAPL is the Apple stock here. And of course, in the date column, we can see that we have the stock prices for all kinds of different dates. So naturally, it makes sense to create a line chart out of data like this. And the way to do that is to take the data set and pass it to the ggplot layer where we modify the aesthetic that we want to map. Here we're going to map on the x-axis the date column, on the y-axis we're going to use the adjusted closing prices, and for the color of the lines we're going to map the stock symbol so that each stock symbol in our data gets its own colored line. And then to create a line all we have to do is to add a gm line layer on top of that. So that that way we get a chart that is full of lines. Here we can make the line width a little bit larger by setting the line width argument as well and then we should modify this chart a little bit. Every chart needs labels so we're going to set a couple of them for the x-axis. We don't actually need labels because honestly everyone can understand that we have year data here and then we set labels for the y-axis, for the legend and for the title and that way everything is a little bit more descriptive. Still I don't like the default theme so at a minimum we should throw in a theme minimal where we set the base size of all the fonts to 16 and we choose a nicer font and that way we've changed the theme but we've also changed the font size and the font family so that everything is more legible. And while we're at it we might as well throw in a theme layer to modify a custom thing like the plot title where we can set it to an element text where this function has a lot of arguments. If you scroll down to it you see that it has a lot of arguments for styling text and here we're just going to make sure that the text text is bold and now if we re-render this we see that our title is bold now which I think looks a little bit better for a title. Cool we have a line chart now and before I show you how to make this line chart a little bit nicer and a little bit more informative because it currently is really messy let me copy this part here so that we always use this theme by default and for that there is the theme set function into which we can just drop in the theme and that way by default ggplot will use these settings and we don't need to repeat them for all the other plots that we want to create today. Nice. All right, so here our idea of having one colored line per stock symbol resulted in a messy spaghetti plot. I want to avoid that, so I will get rid of this color mapping and instead give each line its own panel. And for that, we can use the facet wrap function where we say that the facets are supposed to be set by the variable that is inside of our data set. And here that variable is the stock symbol. So if we stick this in here, then we see that we can make more out of the individual line charts here. And to make things nicer, we can modify the color and set it to a color of our liking. Next up are scatter plots. They are not used as common as line charts, but they are still super useful to show the relationships between two variables. For example, they can be used to distinguish two dimensional patterns or see some other trends in the data. For that, we need a new data set, namely the penguins data set from the Palmer penguins package. And if we minimize this here, then we see that we have a whole bunch of measurements of penguins of specific species living on specific islands. Here we can take this data set and pass it to the plot layer where we modify the aesthetics namely for the x-axis we want to map the flipper length for the y-axis we want to have the build depth and then we just throw a gm point layer on top of that so that we get a plot like this this doesn't look particularly nice yet so let's change the fill color of the point and to actually use the fill color of a point we have to make it into a shape that has a filling and not just one color so that's why we use shape 21 so now we can use an outline color as well as a fill color for these points 
And now if we execute this, we see now that we have blue points with a black border, but we should probably make them larger so that things are visible. And just like before, this plot also needs labels, so we're going to throw in a couple of them. Next, we should make this chart more informative by specifying the color according to the species that are inside of our data set. We're not going to hard code the fill aesthetic here. Instead, we're going to map it using the AES function. And in there, we map the fill aesthetic to the species column. And now if we execute this, we have a new plot with a new legend. So this means that we also need to set a label for this legend. And here we set the label for the fill aesthetic and simply set it to species with a capital S. Finally, I don't really like the colors that were chosen here. So let me modify them by throwing the scale fill manual layer on top of that and then setting the values argument in there to three colors that I like more. And now if I execute this, we see that the colors changed. Here I chose these colors because they come from the colorblind friendly Okabe Ito color palette, but ultimately the choice which colors you want to use is yours. You decide. Next up are histograms. They are a fantastic tool to show you how your data is distributed across a certain variable. And thankfully ggplot makes it really easy to create one because there already is a built-in GM that does exactly what we need. For that we're once again going to take the Parma Penguins data set and then pass it to the ggplot layer and this time we're going to map the X aesthetic to the body mass column. This means that I want to get a histogram for the distribution of the weights of penguins. And to, and to, make, that and to make that work we just have to throw in a GM histogram layer on top of that. And then we have a histogram. Isn't that great? Notice that we didn't actually have to specify a Y aesthetic because what we see on the Y axis now is actually what ggplot computes for you. And to make this plot fit into our theme better, let's also use the fill color that we have set before. And then let's also add a few labels. Once again, we might want to make this plot a little bit more informative. So let's not hard code the fill aesthetic and instead map it to the species. So let's set fill equal to species. And now if we re-render this, we see now that we have a histogram, but all the bars are stacked on top of each other. That's not particularly nice. And you can see this in particular if you put the alpha transparent value to something smaller than one. So there you see that behind any colored bar or behind any colored histogram, there isn't any other color. And if you wanted to change that, you could set the position argument and set it to position identity. And now if you re-render this, you see that everything starts at the common baseline. But even though we got what we wanted, this still is a little bit messy. So let's instead give each histogram for each species its own window. To do so, we can once again use the facet wrap function function and in there we specify that we want to set a species as the faceting variable. And to make things a little bit more comparable we could say that we want to have three rows to stack things on top of each other. And now we can clearly see that the Gen 2 penguins are much heavier than the Adelie penguins. And since we have a separate window for each penguin now we don't actually need the fill aesthetic here anymore and we don't need the alpha and the position. So we can go back to a hard coding the fill aesthetic to the color that we've used before. And that way we get rid of the legend and have more room for our histogram. Next up and a bit similar to histograms, our bar charts. It is easy to confuse these two because the histogram also uses bar charts to visualize how many points fall into one bin. But fundamentally they serve a different purpose. With the histogram you show a distribution and with bar charts you can visualize any quantity that you want. And in ggplot there are two ways to do them and they work pretty similar so that's why they might confuse you. But let me show you my preferred way and then also mention what the different way is so that you can understand what the differences are. To create bar charts let's create a new data set or we just take our penguins data set and count the species. That way we have a short little data set that tells us how many penguins of each species there are. So now we can take our data set and pass it to ggplot where we once again have to specify the aesthetics. For the x-axis we're going to use the species because we want to have one bar per species. And then for the Y aesthetic, we're going to specify the N column here so that the bars know that they have to go all the way up to a coordinate of Y equal to N. And then we throw a gym call layer on top of that to create the bars. Once again, we can make the color nicer and then we throw in labels. And just in case you've seen bar charts done
done differently before, you might have then seen where people use not GM call, but instead use GM bar instead. If we were to try this here, we'd get an error because GM bar is supposed to have only X or Y aesthetic. This means if we were to remove this here, we'd see that we get a bar chart like this. And the reason why this weird bar chart is happening is because GM bar is supposed to do the counting for you. So it will take the data set that you pass into it, and then it will check how many times do you have different species here. In this case, we only have one row per species, so you will also see that reflected in the bar charts. So if you wanted to use GM bar, then you have to use the original data set, and then you get the chart that we've seen before. I personally always prefer to use GM call because it gives me more control of what I want to use as the bar height. But once again, the choice is yours which one of these options you want to use. Finally, there is the heat map. The heat map is a super cool tool to show patterns across two variables. The most notable instance of a heat map is probably the measles heat map that shows the effectiveness of measles vaccines. And with ggplot, you can create such charts as well. Basically, all you need is the GM tile layer that helps you to draw every rectangle and fill it with a color according to a specific value. And to create a heat map, we need a new data set first. So let's calculate a new one using the penguins data set. And this time we count species and island. And if we were to do that, we'd see that we get a data set that looks like this. But here we don't see all combinations of species and island. So this is why we also use the complete function to also see all the combinations that are not depicted in our data set. So here you can see that on the island Bisco, there were no penguins of the species Chinstrap. And now we can take our data set and pass it to the ggplot function where we set the x and y aesthetic and then also set the fill aesthetic to the counts that we have calculated here. And then we just need to throw a gm tile layer on top of that and there we already have the first draft of our heat map. To give each tile a little outline, let's set the color to black. Remember the fill color of these rectangles are still mapped via this n column here, but we can change the outline via the color aesthetic. Also notice that here inside of the fill aesthetic we now have put in a numeric variable. So here this n value is a number now. This is different from what we've done before. In the previous examples we've always mapped the fill aesthetic to something categorical so that we get one color per species. Here we're using a numeric column and thankfully ggplot still works perfectly and it even detects this and then puts in instead of a regular legend it throws in this color bar. Still it might be hard to read exact numbers from these colors so so this is why it helps to throw a gm text layer on top of our chart to give each tile a label. And here we only have to specify the label aesthetic and set this to the end column because the x and y aesthetic are already set from the first layer. And now if we execute this we see that we get labels in there but they are not great to see yet so let's change the font family and the size. And as always we want to make our chart complete with setting labels and then let's do one more thing namely let's change the color here. I have a Kind of issue with the color gradient here namely i don't like the color and also i don't like the fact that higher numbers are lighter colors i'd like to have higher numbers be darker colors and i can change all of that using the scale fill gradient layer where i said that my low color should be white my high color should be this kind of green and in case something is missing let's do grade 20. and with that we do have a nice heat map all right these were our five main charts that everyone should know about i hope this video was useful for you and serves as a good starting guide on your ggplot endeavors. If you want to learn more about ggplot, you might want to check out this playlist here. Or if you want to get really good at ggplot, you might even want to check out my video course on that. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you did. And now all that's left to say is thank you for watching and I will see you next time.